If we want to go to 1 Kings chapter 1, we're going to read 15 through 21 and then 28 through 30. Uh, when you get it, uh, give me a still say. Those of you online, you can give me that thumbs up emoji. First Kings, we're going to go with verse 15 through 21, and then 28 through 30. Amen. When you get it, give me a still say. Amen. If you're in the New Testament looking for First Kings, then you need to meet me in Sunday school until next week. Thank you as we stand in reverence to word. I'm going to read starting with verse 15. Uh, and then we're going to go to 21, then we're going to skip down to 28 to 30. Verse 15 says, so Bathsheba went to see the aged king in his room where Abishah, the Shumanite, the Shunammite, was attending him. Bathsheba bowed down, prostrating herself before the king. What is it you want? The king asked. She said to him, my lord, you yourself swore to me, your servant, by the Lord your God. Solomon, your son, shall be king after me, and he will sit on my throne. But now Adonijah has become king, and you, my lord, the king, do not know about it. He has sacrificed great numbers of cattle, fattened calves and sheep, and has invited all the king's son, uh, Abiathar, the priest, and Joab, the commander of the army. But he has not invited Solomon, your servant. My Lord, the King, the eyes of Israel are all, are, are, of all Israel are on you to learn from you who will sit on the throne of my Lord, the King after him. Otherwise, as soon as my Lord, the King is laid to rest with his ancestors, I and my son Solomon will be treated as criminals. Go down to verse 28. Then David said, call in Bathsheba. So she came into the King's presence and stood before him the king then took an oath, as surely as the Lord lives, who has delivered me out of every trouble, I will surely, surely carry out this very day what I swore to you by the Lord, the God of Israel. Solomon, your son, shall be king after me, and he will sit on my throne in my place. Amen. Lord, add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of his most holy word. Amen. Amen. So our, our, our sermonic theme for Mother's Day is whatever it takes, whatever it takes. Let, let me be clear here uh, I'm on, on, on the uh, phone with my brother this morning. Uh, we have a, a new opinion of Mother's Day since our mother has passed on, amen. Uh, if we could go to some hole someplace and hide until 1201 tonight to completely avoid Mother's Day, he and I would, amen? Uh, but the crazy thing is the Lord made me a pastor so I can't hide out on Mother's Day Sunday, amen? amen. So, so, but it, it, it is then the, the challenge of being able to recognize the significance of a mother and why we feel the emotion of not having our mother physically with us. It, 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 and it's not to discredit fathers. I, I think there is a unique relationship with mothers and fathers, but there is something so defiant about the love of a mother that it is a lasting impression and, and, and the loss, and those of you like myself who have lost both parents, the DNA of family changes so much to where my brother and I approach one another differently simply because my mother is not part of that contact or my father. And so it, it is the challenge of avoiding the depression-filled day of a 
mother. And what I do is I encourage all who have lost their mothers to not take this day in that kind of spirit, but rejoice that for however long or however short you had a mother, whether it was biological, whether stepmother, or there was some aunts that done stepped in and had to do mother's job. My aunts are stepping in with me and my brother now. Uh, rejoice in that. Rejoice in that opportunity uh, to be able to celebrate on this day. Now that takes me now to this study that I, I believe that the Bible unintentionally uh, has not, uh, has deferred unintentionally uh, to a patriarchal uh, mindset of celebration and salvation. I mean it in, in, in this way. The achievements of women uh, as few as they are in our canon, in our biblical canon, uh, are not heralded as blatantly and as strongly as those of men. And, and, and I think too, we, we have to be very careful even with our mindset as we approach the Bible, because our mindset could approach it from a patriarchal Eurocentric mindset that does not give credit uh, to the uh, women um, who live and have breathed within these holy scriptures. Now, it, it does not take away from the divine inspiration of these, and several of them would be men as documented in the scriptures that we have but it does force us to push ourselves to interact beyond those things that have been highlighted and look at the scripture and see what the Lord is saying. We have to be very careful. Just if you look at this example, I, if you look at uh, Brother Charlton Heston and the Ten Commandments, if you compare it scripturally, it's pretty off as far as what the Bible is saying, right? But we have accepted it as, and we, as, as the truth, as the biblical truth that they had it, simply because this image was placed upon us for several years and we accepted it as such. I mean, that's just, that's just what we did. And I, and I think too, also what has happened is that we have coined phrases that have no biblical substance. Last week, if you were with me, uh, I believe I said monkey see, monkey do, right? That ain't scriptural, right? Right? Birds of a feather flock together. You ain't gonna find that biblically. But we say it so much, they say, man, that must be in the Bible someplace because I've been saying and hearing that all of my life. And so, and, and so it, it forces us, church, that if we truly study the word, we will see that in the midst even of this dynamic of trying to push for these accomplishments and this greatness, that, that we need to be able to capture it and not defer to the societal explanation of what happened, right? We tend to lift David, uh, uh, King David, as, first of all, if Christ comes from his DNA, right? But there is a tragic and a tragedy about King David and how he conducted his affair. This is what I love about the Bible, that, that they didn't have the wherewithal like today to burn the stuff that they didn't like. <laughs> Talk to me somebody, right, right, right. They, they, they just told it as what it was because I'm sure Sister Bathsheba might not have wanted her business all out into the centuries of study, right? 
right? Right. But, but, but the Bible took it and said, this is what it is. And so you have to be careful now, especially as we delve into this talk on motherhood, that, that, that we have to be careful on where we come down on what happened and how we see it biblically, right? We will, we will you know, obviously, you know, if we're not careful, we'll blame Eve completely for the fall of man when Adam had a choice also, and he chose to eat the fruit. But keep in mind, it wasn't until he ate the fruit that everything went crazy and then they all saw that they were naked, right? And so, and so, and so you see that. So the tendency has been that let's go at Eve, right? Right. Where, where we then give Adam a pass, right? Right. The dysfunction of Abraham and Sarah, you know, we can forget her strength of character that helped her. She had to endure this marriage, this travel to new lands through foreign countries, right? Uh, and then dysfunction in our family, unable to be able to produce children, but have the strength uh, to be able to produce a child all the way up into her later years to endure. Her endurance was there, but we tend not to grab a hold of it and embrace it. And I, and I think that is what has happened, Deacons, and, and especially for our young girls who have come up uh, 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 through church and perhaps their disdain with not being able to see themselves and see the joy of being themselves and have pushed them and pushed them away right because they couldn't see themselves we we see we you know we put up obviously all the pastors of this church including myself with four will be all men that they will see the our deacons will be all all men and then if we look at and again I don't believe that whatever denomination we were all in that these stories were told the same in Sunday school where we had this I, I remember years ago in Sunday school this picture of Moses this white Moses and this curly hair on these little pamphlets where he's holding this and where these sisters may not have been able to see themselves right, right and the beauty of the struggle and then have let themselves be pushed away simply because of the embarrassment of potential mistakes that they have made, relationships that have not gone the way in which they thought that they should, that they should go. So, so we bear some responsibility from the pulpit uh, all the way to our teachers, to our classrooms, to just those who have overseen us and, and how we uh, uh, declare what little girls should be or what women should be. And if they are not the same, then the ability to chastise them and push them away. So that's why Bathsheba now it is so important for us to be able to see the brilliance of the sister in what she endured just to get to first Kings and with her son becoming king. Right. Now, she, she, her, her legacy through history continues to be lost in the dysfunction of David's house. And she has been looked upon more so as the object of David's lust. Right. And then being put into David's dysfunction instead of the abuse and the dysfunction of which, of which she endured. Now, she, she was put into a difficult position, not on her own account, right? She, she had the shame of being impregnated by him, then had to become part of the lie that she, that, that she became a part of as they patiently waited for her husband to lie with her in order that they could hide the fact that David had impregnated her. I mean, this is something off of a TV show here. So, so, so we gonna get your husband to come in to lie with you, right? So we can hide the fact that I lied with you and got, and got you pregnant. Her husband now in his refusal to leave the battlefield because he wanted to serve the very person who had stabbed him in the back, yeah. right? And then, and then what they did is since he would not leave his post, David put him in a position so he could die. 
Now, this is all what this sister is dealing with. This is all, she was just on her patio, just being beautiful. Okay, all right. Now she was pulled into this mess. Okay, now her husband is murdered, right? So, okay, so now, now he takes, David portrays himself as now the savior and now takes her into his home. And, and the very, the baby that she was pregnant with already, now they claim that this is new. And so now this is David's child, which it was David's child in the first place, right? So, so now this sister is forced to play along with this, right? And then, and then now she is pulled into the dysfunction of David's household, Right, right, which involved rape, which involved inner, inner battles of trade. He had a bunch of wives. He had all this dysfunction going on, right? Now, in the process of her being pregnant with his child, and then he was caught, right, by God with the prophet coming in and telling him that you were wrong, the lie is up. God took the life of the baby. She lost a husband and a baby right again now my sister was just on the porch and now had been pulled into this now she now is she comes pregnant again with the commitment that your son will be the king okay now think about this now think about think about think about now how we have encountered people or counted these young ladies with similar circumstances on how they got here, right? With children, right? Maybe they like, maybe they not married, maybe they married into a dysfunction, right? Maybe, okay. How then did we receive? How would we receive Bathsheba? Okay, because she wasn't well received in this household. Because if David were to die, so would her and her son die. Okay, unless her son was the king. So, 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 so keep in mind here now, as she was a widow, right, as she had lost a child, right, and now a mother, this pain had now pushed her into a defiance that for whatever happened, right, you ain't getting my son. All these years now of waiting in this household, because now if you get into, as you get into first king, David has now become an old man, okay? This, uh, 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 this, this, this woman who is tending to him has been put there to tend to him because he can't tend to himself, okay? Now he's still got the same dysfunction going on, right? Okay, he still, has, he still has all of that in his household. Now again, he got a bunch of wives, he got a bunch of kids, he's got a lot of drama that's going on. But we focus on him as the great warrior and the king. Yeah. Okay, right? Not, not, not the fact that he had been an abuser and a murderer, right? And, but now we look at her now, okay? And history has had that challenge with looking at her as the beautiful woman and as a strong woman that she has been. Okay, now, now here, now here we are. Now here we are. Even in the imperfections, right? Still her motherhood reigns supreme, right? Of all what had been taken from her, right? She did not make a request to go in this house. She was perfectly fine with her warrior husband. But now she is in David's mess. But if there's anything that she have left, motherhood will be fought for. I will fight for my son. Okay, right? And that's what mothers do. And that's one of the things in, in, in the ways in which we in which we celebrate. It's not that fathers don't do a great job. They, fathers do have, they have just an unsaid, unsaid they, they have the ability to be able to walk away if they choose to walk away. And some through history have, but that mother in the majority of the time have no other opportunity but to stay the course. Okay, 
right? To only find, to find some ways in which to ensure that these children survive. Dysfunctional relationships that may have produced children, protecting these children from the dysfunction, ensuring that they can still be great. Or the grief-stricken mother that's thrown into being a single mother now rises to the moment that even though my heart is broken, my soul is grieving, I still must be a mother. Or the one now who is bound with, 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 being a, 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 with managing the household, sacrificing continually, and then the nerve and the audacity to out of, to out of all of this, still be a good cook. When I was in, when I was in seminary, uh, 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 one of my colleagues, uh, uh, she's a, a minister out of the Lutheran church, she stood up and I, I never, when she said it, she blew me away. She said, I didn't know that being married meant I had to figure out what everybody was going to eat for the rest of my life. Right? I find myself in the midst of it with my... Uh, uh, sitting there with my kids, you know, with our tongues hanging out. So what are we gonna do for food? <laughs> whatever it takes, right? Whatever it takes, whatever it takes. That's the mother now, whatever it takes. Now, right now here, church, church, church we're following here now, the king is on his deathbed. And now already a son, a older son, Adonijah has, has already assumed the reign. Right. If you if you look, I mean, if you look and see, you know, the scripture, I'm just going to point. Look, look at what all the brother has done. If you go to verse uh, uh, 19, he sacrificed great numbers of cattle. He's fattened the calves and sheep. He has invited all the king's son, Abiathar, the priest and Joab, the commander of the army. But he didn't invite Solomon. Come on now, you got you got a good party going on. But you don't bring Solomon because, you know, the promise of king was on Solomon. OK, so, so so this brother here is putting it out there in the press. I'm I'm king. I'm going to show you that I'm king. I'm going to kill all these animals. I'm going to show you that I'm the king. Okay. OK, OK, OK. Now, now his elevation to the throne now ensures that the death the, that Bathsheba and her son would die because you had to kill the promise. Okay. He would never have a settled kingdom as long as Solomon was alive. If he killed Solomon, he would have to kill Bathsheba. Okay. All right. Now, Bathsheba had, had fought. We, we, the Bible don't go into the influence, but she had been politically savvy for all of these years. How do we know? Because her and Solomon are still alive. So she had done something. So you've got to give the sister credit for the brilliance and for the politics in which she played just to get to this moment. The scripture that we skipped over here is Nathan, the prophet, comes up to her and said, look, do you understand that this son is out here? That, that okay, talking about that he is the king when the promise was made to you, right? She didn't, she didn't say, well, I can't do nothing about it, right? She didn't say, look, how I got into this kingdom does not give me the credibility necessary in order to be able to go to the king, right? Right now, now again, now some of you uh, mothers out there, you know my sisters. It doesn't matter that you know if if you need to tell the president of the United States something, you do it. Yeah. Right, you get past Secret Service. <laughs> okay, if my mother was alive right now, I would tell her go tell the man to forgive them loans, please. <laughs> Only the people that got loans. Uh, all the ones that don't got them. No, they need to pay them off. No, we don't. Forget them loans right now, Joe. Come on, Joe. You can do it. Right? You, you can do it. Not every, You can't please everybody. But please the ones that's in school debt so bad 
that they can't even vacation. Amen? But Sheba was not concerned about how she went into David's house. She was not concerned about how she went to David's bed. Right? Because it was about her child. Okay? It was about him surviving. It was about him living. She was going to do it. That's what mothers do. Right? They're not concerned about, about the status. They are not concerned about the politics. They are concerned about the child making it. Amen. The child could have made 20 mistakes before. You still owe him another chance. The child could have made 30 mistakes previously and, and, make, and make 20 mistakes more. You still owe her a chance. Right. Give him a chance. Amen. Right? Give him a chance. Right, right. They talked about the grief, right? No, okay, knowing the jealousy that comes. Her concern was that her son would be the king. Moreover, that her son would live. That's why we celebrate mothers. Yeah. Right? No matter what dysfunction they came out of, no matter what dysfunction they may be in, they still rise up to make sure the babies get a better chance yeah. Amen. that's it that's it that's all that's all that she was right about but she but if you look at her life right history and how we talk about the bible does not herald it enough and that's and, and, and i mean it's simply because even even our biblical material from the things that we had uh uh um as, in sunday school and, and coming up as youth right those things did not emphasize the struggle of her. We may have seen it in our own way and still didn't preach it the way it should be preached. In this context, she is the hero. She is the mother's day. For whatever time that she had, for whatever she suffered, she never stopped being a mother. I lost one child before. I'm not going to lose this one. He going to be king. And David, with the conviction by which this sister came in, you're right. He going to be king. Okay? If you look, if, if, if you look throughout these chapters, right, the brother Adon, Adon, Adonijah, who, 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 who had fattened the cattle, you know, had to come to Solomon and ask for grace because he found out David made Solomon king. Okay. Now, this is the thing. This is the thing. If you read through the scripture here, okay, the way that he got Solomon to spare his life, he went to his mother. Can you get a message to your son? Ain't that something? Right? Bathsheba now then moved up to where she's got the ear of the king who is her son. Look at where she started from. Look at the hurt and pain that she went through. Look at everything that she went through. This is why we celebrate mothers. This is why sometimes it hurts so much when we get to Mother's Day because that advocate that we have, right? That, I mean, that, that, that advocacy. I mean, you're trying to, oh, come on, mama. Give me, give, give me a few more breaths. I need, you, I need you to go talk to my employer about getting me a raise. <laughs> I told you, I told, I told a story and I'll, and I'll be done here so you guys can get on it. Gosh, and thank you all for even being here today. But I tell you, tell the story when I got to the Navy here as a lawyer over here in Bremerton and I felt, and I felt like I wasn't being treated right, you know, uh, uh, because it wasn't that, you know, it wasn't that many uh, black lieutenants there and I was a black lieutenant there uh, and a racial, a racial circumstance had occurred. And so I, all I was doing was just telling my mother, you know, about how upset I was. And then this was, this, this was her response. Do I need to come up there? <laughs> I mean, these dudes got guns at the gate. They got full on cannons, right? Here come Gracie Mae Davenport. Stay off my boy. Come on, we celebrate the whatever it takes mothers, right? This day, whether your mother lived, right? Or whether, or, whether, or whether she has passed, she paid the price of motherhood 
to where you got something in you that's always with you wherever you go. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's praise God for these mothers. <laughs>